In one of her writings, the well-known American author Ursula Le Guin remarked, for a word to be said, there must be quiet both before and after the word is pronounced. All things have a beginning and an end, according to this adage. Everything in the cosmos has a start and a finish. Some fundamental particles persist for incredibly brief intervals of time. Microbes that can live for a few hours to a few days. Humans have a long lifespan. Even stars that last for millions or even billions of years ultimately lose their brightness. How about the cosmos itself though? Will it ever pass away too? In such case, how will it take place? And what occurs once it passes away? The stationary universe idea was the first explanation for how our planet came to be. It asserts that there is no beginning and no end to the cosmos. It has always existed and will continue to exist forever since it is in a stable and balanced condition. Observations and computations swiftly disprove this idea, however, as there are phenomena in the universe that have irreversible nature. A notion that is popularly known as the Big Bang Theory started to take shape in the decade between 1910 and 1920. It is presently the most comprehensive scientific hypothesis describing the universe's creation and development. To develop the Big Bang Theory, several scientists have contributed their work. Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity writings served as its foundation. The key finding of this theory is the presumption that dark energy determines the future of the cosmos, a fictitious type of energy responsible for space expansion. However, it is still premature to draw any firm conclusions regarding the nature of this physical event. There are several theories, and each one has benefits and drawbacks. According to current knowledge, the universe has been around for little about 14 billion years, counting from the moment of the Big Bang. Depending on the dark energy density, the cosmos will either continue to expand forever at an ever-increasing rate, or it will slow down and become inactive. In this scenario, the universe will contract back into the original tiny singularity. Which of these alternatives is most likely? Cannot be definitively answered by us due to the state of science today. They allow for the presentation of two equally plausible scenarios for the course of events, known as the Great Gap and the Great Contraction. The distance between things affects the pace of the universe's expansion, which happens more quickly the farther away they are. Imagine two dots painted on an air-filled balloon. These markings will start to drift apart as soon as the balloon inflates. The expansion of the cosmos may be generally seen in this way since space is always growing. The starting distance between the dots determines how quickly they travel apart. The event horizon is the distance beyond which a speed is faster than the speed of light. Beyond it, everything is invisible to the spectator. They are not capable of interaction or observation. Consider how the sky would initially darken when the faraway galaxies and their clusters disappeared. The Milky Way stars would then gradually fade away, beginning with those closest to the Sun. The Big Bang hypothesis predicts that the universe will expand at an ever-increasing rate. This will cause the forces of expansion to progressively overtake the effects of gravity. A cluster of galaxies will collapse first, followed by individual galaxies and star clusters, and finally individual star systems. The swiftly escaping planets and satellites will no longer be held close to the luminaries. The breakdown of matter into atoms, followed by the breakdown of atoms into elementary particles, will constitute the subsequent phase. There will be no more matter. After then, the current rules of physics will no longer hold true, and it is difficult to foresee what will happen next. According to recent measurements, space is growing faster than it is contracting. But since we don't understand the nature of dark energy, it's feasible that the process may go the other way and the universe would start to contract. This may occur, for instance, if the universe's overall gravity is greater than the force driving its expansion. The Great Contraction is the name given to this set of circumstances. If this occurs, the universe will continue to function roughly as it does right now until it shrinks to a size that is five times smaller than it is right now. Eventually, a group of galaxies will combine to form a supercluster that will fill the entire universe. Stars will also be born and die, planets will develop, and other events will take place within the galaxies themselves. All galaxies will merge into one when the universe contracts by a further 20 times, when its volume will only be 1% of the one it is now. Relic radiation will eventually reach a temperature of 274 Kelvin and then continue to climb. This implies that soon there won't be any liquid water left in the universe, at least not in the form that we are accustomed to, which is necessary for biological life. The universe will get much hotter if space is compressed even further. Planets will burn up before melting. The universe will collapse into a massive cloud of exploding plasmas. 
atoms and elementary particles will inevitably disintegrate and the cosmos will eventually contract into a singularity like to the one from which it originated. A hypothesis exists that expands on the huge bounce notion. The huge bounce principle underlies it. In accordance with it, the universe will be reborn in a new Big Bang when it collapses into a singularity as a result of the Big Bang. If we can talk about eternity beyond space and time, then these occurrences will continue to occur repeatedly, likely forever. How long any of these event scenarios will last is difficult to predict. Dark energy is still not well understood enough. It's feasible that the great rupture or the big contraction will happen when stars and planets are still present in the cosmos. What if it doesn't though? What will happen to the universe if its ultimate demise is many millions of years in the future? Still, the known universe cannot continue to exist endlessly due to the principles of physics. Each of the four prolonged cosmic epochs has a distinct face. We are supposedly living in the age of stars. There are still plenty of interstellar gas or helium in the universe surrounding us that is used to create stars. The process of birthing new lights will continue until all intergalactic gas has been used up. This period will come to an end between 1 and 100 trillion years from now. The sun and the bulk of other stars will exhaust their nuclear fuel during this period, turning them into white dwarf neutron stars or black holes. The era after it is known as the Era of Decline. There won't be any more main sequence stars at this point. White and brown dwarfs will hold the majority of the universe's stuff, leaving neutron stars and black holes to hold the remainder. All of these items will cool gradually over a very long period of time, on the scale of up to a decillion years. The heat radiation that has built up inside white dwarfs will eventually be released, turning them into black dwarfs. The continuous thermonuclear events in the innards of brown dwarfs will ultimately come to an end when they cool down as well. Black holes will eventually consume most of the stuff. The primary processes in the universe at this time will be the destruction of dark matter and proton decay. All of the atoms we are aware of are composed of protons, which are elementary particles. They are regarded as one of the most durable subatomic particles. A proton has an estimated lifespan of 100 to a decillion years, or 10 to the 41st degree. Therefore, matter in the universe should consist of a sea of different elementary particles towards the conclusion of the recession epoch, with isolated neutron stars and black holes persisting among them. The period of black holes is the name given to the future era. Some theories predict that they will group and merge until they become a single enormous black hole. Other theories predict that black holes will gradually evaporate and radiate energy until they vanish. Black holes evaporate as a result of the quantum phenomenon known as Hawking radiation. The dark hole gets smaller and more powerful, and ultimately drains the hole of all its energy and materials. In ten hundredths of a year, this procedure is anticipated to be finished. The Google is the name of the quantity. Whatever the case, in the end, all that will remain in the universe is empty space filled with quarks, photons, electrons, positrons, neutrinos, and other remnants of events that occurred in earlier epochs. Positron and electron mutually exterminate one another over time. The universe may conceivably continue to exist in this state eternally, at least until a major contraction or major collapse. In any event, mankind won't survive to experience that. It will probably vanish when stars first appeared. For nearly a billion years, our planet will be livable. The sun will then begin to progressively warm up, scorching it. And our star, by this point a red giant, will shed its outer layer and change into a white dwarf after five to six billion years. But what happens once the cosmos is destroyed? In order for this question to have a potential response. After all, there won't be either space or time in the understanding that is available to us after the death of the cosmos in whichever scenario that occurs. Even if the big bounce idea is accurate and there will be a large fresh explosion and a new universe with its own galaxies and stars after the big compression, we will have no means of knowing about it. How could we be ignorant of the prior universe, the previous to ours? There must be quiet before and after a word for it to be heard. We will also be heard.